As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's right. eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only CP Goots. What's up, dude? It's going to be a sleepy podcast. We're going to do our best to make sure that we keep the energy up for everybody else. Steel's traveling, so we're doing this nice and late at night, but we want to make sure that we get the content out for you guys so you know that we're a little sleepy, but we're good. We're CP boys, but we are here to do a job. And we are excited for this job because I, for the most part, enjoyed this second reunion episode. Uh, the Joe part, I could have done without for the yeah. the extent that it went on for. I don't know why we had to spend 20 minutes on that topic, but didn't hate it. So that's two. That's two VPR reunion episodes. I was like, oh, okay, I, I'm I'm liking this. Yeah, it's really interesting because the end of the season was just so unbelievably produced. And I agree. The first two episodes, for whatever reason, have been much more entertaining. And all they're doing is talking about a season that we didn't really care about. But I for know. some reason, it works. I, I don't really get it. But I do agree. The whole Joe thing dragged on for so, so long. And like, really, it comes down to what? Two scenes that they wanted to talk about? It's... Her getting bullied at the hotel yep. and did Schwartz lead you on? And what's the status of your friendship or relationship? That did not need to take a third or almost half of the episode. Well, it did because they need content to fill these three episodes. So that's why they lingered on that for a while. But I'm not saying that it wasn't captivating for parts of it, especially watching Schwartz gaslight in real time. Like it was literally happening <laughs> It, she's saying one thing, he's saying another, and he's not even paying attention to what she was saying. And she's like, yeah, no, yeah. it was pretty much we were dating. He's like, we're friends. We're just friends. She's like, it was pretty special. He's like, it was not that big of a deal. <laughs> just fucking <laughs> ruining this poor girl. But I mean, again, like where my sympathy leaves is when I saw those lives that she did recently. And it's like, oh, okay, well, the shit that she's been saying in her lives on Instagram have made me not sympathetic. And I should be because... She got the short end of the stick in this season, which she's like a friend yeah. of, and she still got smoked. So I feel bad for her there. But then she went on the lives and did herself no favor. So that, you know, that's the Sandoval yeah. approach. Yeah. And again, I mean, it's just, do we really need that much screen time with Joe? I mean, kind of, because it was an interesting relief to the rest of the things going on. Now, obviously, this episode was a little more, I think we talked about this before we started recording. This episode was a little more segmented. It had... Mm -hmm a lot more structure to it. We're able to follow things and we're able to jump from thing to thing to thing instead of just being all over the place. But when it comes to the Joe of it all, you really, it's sort of just like watching her in real time, her actual emotions. And like, yeah, she had all those quirky scenes the whole time. But in this, we get to see her go from extremely happy to extremely sad to worked up back to happy like we get yeah. to watch all of that in real time it's an absolute roller coaster and that's the best way to describe her and watching her lives and everything else that's been going on this is just like a portrait of joe a portrait of joseph that's what we get joseph to <laughs> yeah the joseph if you will but <laughs> the joseph we're not even going to do a preamble tonight i know i say that and then we end up doing a preamble we're not we're getting right. That into, was our preamble. Yeah, we're getting. Our, our into preamble the, was was breaking down the Joe of it all, which is part of this episode. So now, when we get to that point, we'll just refer you back to the beginning of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> See minute one. <laughs> <laughs> but as Shooter said, I am out in Texas. I get to watch Pop play some softball, so that's why we're doing some remote recording. But wanted to make sure that we get our content out there, especially this episode, because. These two reunion episodes have been better than the majority of the season of Vanderpump. So we need to celebrate that. And let's dive right back in. And we start out with Lala and Katie are kind of finishing up their back and forth that they had. And I'm glad that Katie finally spoke up at some point when she just flat out says, like, can everyone stop telling me how to think and feel? Because the whole time I'm watching this scene, everyone has an opinion on how she should be reacting to certain things. And Lala keeps trying to push this narrative of, you weren't saying things to 
Ariana that you've been saying to me behind closed doors, Katie chalks it up as, yeah, in the moment, I was venting. I wasn't thrilled with what was going on. She was off doing her thing. I was left alone with the shop. When we got to the season, I was cool. Like, because Ariana and I discuss these things because we're real friends. So we had issues. And also Ariana's on the side the whole time. Like, yeah, I get it. No, no, no we're good. Yep. I hear. I I yeah. heard what she had to say. I, I get why she's frustrated. That would be frustrating for me too. Non-issue. And Lala keeps pushing the shit. Yeah, no, I, I I understand too. Yeah, it's it's fucking insane. With Lala in particular, the way that she's going about everything makes no sense. And and I'm trying to figure out exactly why she feels like she can talk to people like this after how the season ended. Yeah. Like, did no one tell her? And and that's what I kind of want to know. And I know that we get you know the last five minutes of the last episode of the season, they get to all watch it together. Do they know about that or do they are they like are they operating under the assumption that the rest of the cast has already seen that and like we're good now? Well, they know Ariana hasn't seen it. Yeah, so they were there. So I, I'm just wondering where Lala is getting off with this. And I feel like it's it's so Lala to be able to sit there and tell Katie, hey, we talked about all of this off camera. This is something that was not aired to the public. I'm going to bring it up now. But yeah. later... She talks about something that was on camera that was cut, and she doesn't want to talk about that. She wants to act like that didn't happen. So you no, can't have wants, it both ways. She wanted to no, use no. that. She wants to talk about the stuff from that her and Katie talked about off camera. And she says, yes. you're not real. Every time the cameras are rolling, you're not going to do this. Like It's unbelievable. She's like staring herself in the mirror. This is how you are, Lala. You're bringing up a scene that you know was not aired later with Ariana, and you're throwing it back in her face and making her redo oh, yes. it because it wasn't on. You, you don't get to bring this up, what Katie talked about off camera, and then talk about Ariana as if she never said it when it was on camera. Like yeah, you don't a, get to have it both ways. It makes no sense. So my my theory is that that Lala is operating under the guise of we saw her last episode or in the first hour of it going through everything. And I felt like she was a little timid for how she ended the season. But now she's sort of growing and growing and growing and she's getting more and more agitated. And she's getting more, I guess, headstrong with it all where she's now picking people apart that she doesn't usually pick apart. And she's trying to be the queen. I think that she thinks that the rest of the cast has seen the end of that episode and that she's scot-free. Like, she's good. Like, people oh, yeah. aren't going to react. People aren't going to bring this up. So I do hope that that last five minutes that we get at the end of the next episode will be an absolute strike-down moment for Lala where everybody's like, fuck, what the hell? I think it will be from Ariana's standpoint. I mm -hmm. I mean, Sheena knows what happened. Sheena was right there. That That's the yeah. bigger question is who was present for that moment. And also, everyone else watched it. Right. Like everyone else has seen right. that scene. Uh, Ariana is the only one that has not. No, but... no, no. They haven't seen that scene. That's the whole point. How? If they watch. Oh, they haven't right. watched they it. The it reunion wasn't there. Before. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Oh, shit. OK. So that's yeah. why I'm that's then... why I'm saying that that Lala doesn't know. She might think that one that wasn't actually filmed and she was able to just walk away. Same with Tom, because Tom, obviously, he ended that episode by saying, yeah, this is really good, good for, for me. me. Yeah, they might be operating under the guise that that was not part of the season, that that did not get caught on film or on audio. They can't be that dumb. I, I take that back. That, that uh, is not yeah. true. That yeah. is not true. But they should know better at this point after year better. 11. But during this whole thing with Lala and Katie, Ariana's point was so good because she's like, she has been her authentic self for 11 years and people hate her for it. And I was like, I raised my hand. I was like, you're totally right. And I have come around on Katie. I've appreciated that she is consistent. Like that's what we gave her credit for all season is Katie is consistent. We don't always like her, but she always says what she believes. She stands by it. She will not be pushed by anybody to say or feel a certain way if she doesn't feel that way. So that I respect the hell out of her for. I'm glad that she stood her ground here, especially. And I'm so sick of this. Like, I love to film. Like, it's cathartic. I need to be able to talk about this shit on screen. It's like, this is coming from somebody that is afraid they're going to lose this paycheck. Because the Lala that we've watched for years has not been forthcoming with everything. So, now that she's taken this approach of, I'm going to be the producer's pet. I'm going to push whatever narrative I can to stay relevant. And she's going after the two people that she will not take down. You will not take Katie down. You are definitely not going to take Ariana down. So, like... 
it's a very it's a bold strategy, Cotton, and I don't see it playing out well for her. It's not. I mean, there was rumors of a spinoff for her, and that's getting just eviscerated across the internet right now. So yeah. I, I just like I get what she's trying to do. She's trying to save her job, so to speak. Right. But clumsy, very clumsy. Well, it, I think that like the whole the you know, filming is very cathartic for me and getting this all out is cathartic for me. Do you think she feels that way about doing all the shit that she's doing on Amazon Live right now? Like the whole gender reveal for her baby. I'm going to do it on Amazon Live. I'm not going to do it with my friends and family. I'm going to do it on Amazon Live and get paid for it. I bet, like, honestly, if Lala could, she would do anything on Amazon Live, anything in her life. She would give birth and then walk out of that room and be like, here's my new baby, Amazon yeah. Live. Am I getting paid for this? Like, no, you're not doing this because it's cathartic. You're doing it because it's your job. And you pointed this out right to Katie when you got mad at her for saying that she was going to come after your business or whatever. Your business is being on TV. The other things came because you're on TV. If you lose that one thing, nobody's going to give a shit about your podcast. You can have as many guests on as you want, but nobody's going to listen to it. Nobody's going to care about your off-brand things because in a couple of years, you're going to get forgotten. Ooh, shots fired. Boom. But Let's keep trucking because we could probably spend the next 30 minutes on this topic. The next thing we talk about is the Sheena and Schwartz hookup and the rumor of that when it happened. And I guess it was at her little sister's cheerleading competition. She was making out with it. The, the setup doesn't make sense. And Sheena is painting herself as 100% not in the wrong. I don't know. I don't know if that's how that story went exactly. Yeah. I do not think that she entertained it for an extended period of time. I don't think that it was like a a mutual makeout, but the way that she describes it, it was almost like she was like, hell no, we're absolutely not doing this. Get away from me. No shot. And I don't know. It just, it seems that's not how she, that's not how she described it during the season. Oh, during I, the I, season, she was caught off guard. She said, yeah, it happened. And I, you know, we, I wasn't going to bring it up to anybody. It was just like a moment. I'm not even sure that it happened. And now she's got her story straight. She was able to sit it. on this for a couple of months, maybe talk to Schwartz, talk to Sandoval, get the, everybody's story straight, whoever was there. Ariana says that she doesn't really remember. She just remembers making out with Sheena. She doesn't remember the Schwartz of it all. So she's able to put this whole story together and be like, no, absolutely not. I would never do that because she's deathly afraid of Katie. She wants yeah. to be, Sheena wants to be everybody's friend. If there's an opportunity for her to maybe not be someone's friend, even if she doesn't care about them or she doesn't think that they care about her, she's going to make sure that she tries to smooth it over. So, no, I don't believe her one bit. That's a really good point. But I thought the most interesting thing that came from this is when they bring up the, oh, yeah, Sheena, you said that everyone has flirted with you at some point. And she's like, they have. Sandoval, that one stuck out to me because – they were back at their hotel room, I guess, raiding the mini bar. The phrasing, I was like, oh, that's your move, you fucking creep. Because he said to her, Kristen and I haven't been intimate lately. Does that sound familiar? You uh -huh. fucking skis. That's just his move. Uh -huh. When he's in a relationship and wants to get some ass on the side, he goes with the, I'm not getting any at home. Our, our sex life is dead. Everything sucks. And then he tries to pull at their heartstrings. Like, what a scumbag. Yep. And that I thought that got glossed over. I wish Andy had heard that and been like, whoa, whoa. And you saw they panned over to Ariana and she gets it. She kind of nods. She's like, mm-hmm. See, told you. Like, he tried to do that shit with Sheena. And I believe that 1,000%. Like, what a dirtball, dude. <laughs> I think he still would, honestly. I mean, the he way would. that he acts, like, like we talk about, or rather not us, but Sheena and Brock always talk about Sandoval as the stand-up dude that does anything for anyone. No, he's always got a motive, whether it's, I want to be painted as this like charitable person or I'm trying to hook up with you. And sometimes it's both. So honestly, at the end of the both. day, I don't believe anything that's going on. Yeah, I think it's definitely both. But yeah, that was definitely an eyebrow raiser when a, when the thing pops up that he's not being intimate with Dodie at the time. Like, yeah, is that what you just do at the end of your relationships? Like you're a piece of shit and your girlfriend starts to resent you for a while and now you're not having sex. So you paint her as the villain. And look at lonely old Tom over here. He's not getting his dingling played with. Let me go over and see if I can go do this somewhere else. <laughs> I think that's his move. He's a fucking dirtbag, dude. But yeah, we get, people fall uh, for it. Uh, it sucks. It's he stinks. He stinks on ice. But we get into Max and Katie's hookup, and this. 
this is just funny now at this point. And it, it's exactly what we thought it was during the season and why Schwartz reacted the way he did. It's like, it's a level playing field now. It's not by any means. It's not even close, no. but it does give him a little ammo to joke around about it. Now they can be a Correct. little bit lighter on the topic, but no, it's not comparable to cheating on your wife because she hooked up with your best friend, not even remotely, but it is funny. Like they have a, they just have a good rapport now. Like they do. They're the back and forth is funny. They laugh things off. It's not that deep. They can be in the same room and be friends. And they're look, for her sake, obviously, no, they should not get back together. She she knows better than that. No one has to tell her that. Like she's very aware no. of it. But it is fun to see them interact when they're on good terms because they're funny and they have a really good back and forth. So this scene I just thought was like a nice little little reprieve from everything and the hammer home was so it was a one-time thing right and she's like wait what wait, what <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't remember i was like oh she uh, fucking went back she no, did twice. Yeah. <laughs> which good for her like who I gives mean, yeah shit? good for her especially if you're like maybe it would have been a one-time thing if tom was outraged and the rest of the group was like what the fuck katie what are you doing everybody's like oh it's just kind of funny yeah tom fucked around the whole time you guys were married and you were dating you deserve to go do that that's funny and she's like all right i'll do it again yeah no that the <laughs> second time is a little more vindictive in a good way that, yeah, that time is more yeah. like a straight up just middle finger it's like yeah Hell yeah get him <laughs> but move on we get to the tahoe trip and primarily they're talking about the queen of the group comment from schwartz and he explains it away as you know i didn't like that she was speaking for other people in the group that's how it came out now tom schwartz likes to play though like he's dumb or doesn't know what he's saying the one thing you can credit with when he wants to be articulate that's when the true schwartz comes out and it's like oh no he's good with words and i don't think he messes up his words i think that he gets caught up says some shit and then goes damn it the mask slipped Fuck, put the yeah. mask back on. Be dumb again. Be dumb. So I don't mm -hmm. think that that was a misstep. Or I do think it was a misstep, but I don't think that he was just saying in the moment, like, don't speak for them. Like, that was a broader thing for sure. But it does bring up the Ariana's ego complex that has been brought up across the board. Like, has she got an ego since she has blown up and everything? And her responses all night were on point, calm, cool collected she didn't get rattled by anybody and she says look the people i'm closest with nobody said that a lot of people i don't know have said that the message boards or whatever online are saying that but the people in my circle no one said that i've had an ego but it goes into like the sheena friendship and sandoval's friendship with sheena and whether or not ariana had a problem with it and even here ariana's like look your feelings are valid and this is what not just you and I have been saying, I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of people watching the show have been saying, yeah, you can have a friendship or whatever you want to do over there, fine. There is no reason for you to try to talk to Ariana about it. Like, that's never going to go well. She's made her boundaries very clear, and yet you keep trying to step over them to get her blessing on this. You're not going to get it. You've gotten enough. That's what my whole problem with Sheena this season is like, why do you continue to poke and prod? I know why she is. Again, it's the paycheck, but you don't need to keep going back. You wanted the okay. You got it at the end of the season. You fucking backdoored your best friend by setting her up with Sandoval waiting in the wings, which hopefully we talk about that too. But yep. I don't get it. I don't understand other than from a show's perspective of trying to push the needle. Why do you think that Ariana, of all people, is going to be your shoulder to cry on about her ex-boyfriend who cheated on her in the biggest scandal we've seen in the world. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and, and I don't think it's even, uh, um, and this is not giving Sheena any credit, but I do think that other people are urging her to go talk to Ariana about it. Go talk to Ariana, see if maybe you can have like that cut scene that we didn't get to see and with the two of them in the pool where she says, oh, you won't go talk to Tom like you would be doing it for me. Why the fuck is this about you? I don't know. Like, it's not about you. Don't make it about yourself. And I think that is genuinely Sheena. I think that she actually wants to make it about herself, much like she did with Dancing with the Stars, which we get to in a second. But I think that she genuinely wanted it to be about her. And she wanted Ariana to acknowledge her feelings on the matter. And why would Ariana have the capacity to go and, and worry about your feelings in the midst of all of this? Like, I wonder how all of this is making Sheena feel. 
oh, let me see. She's actually being friends with Tom again, and she wants me to talk to him. Like, that's lunacy. That's fucking yeah. batshit crazy. So, no. And nobody's speaking up. This is, the like, I think the worst part about this cast right now is that there's just – there's just no one else on this cast aside from Ariana right now who has any logic. I mean, yeah, you bring Allie out and Allie had one of the funnier lines of the night where yeah, she said, the oh, best yeah, line of the getting, night. getting married. I, I'm not going to listen to any of you fucking idiots. No, sure, she said that. I wrote it down because I thought it was the best line I've heard this entire season. She said, not the most inspiring group. No offense, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like there is no one else on this cast that has any logic or reason involved in their mind. Mm -mm. So when Sheen is going on about this, you would expect at least one other person. And look, Katie's done it the whole time. So like, I'm not going to put that she on her. That she needs to do it. Yeah. She doesn't have to. I think that her and Ariana are in such good spots where Katie gets to figure out what she wants to do. If she wants to come back to the show, great. If not, also great. Ariana's checked out. She doesn't give a shit anymore. That's why she's so calm during all of this. But Sheena's saying these things like maybe James, maybe uh, obviously Schwartz isn't going to do it, but like maybe someone from across the room could just be like, yeah, that's fucking crazy, Sheena. Why would you think that this is a good idea? Why would you think that this is something that you need to do? Well, at least James jumped in at the end. I appreciated that moment uh, about the dogs. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I think I think you can, you can posit a lot of different ideas as to why they're doing that but i don't really know maybe they all have some reservations about ariana leaving the show maybe they don't want to cross her maybe they don't want i, I don't think they're afraid of lala maybe they just don't want to get involved or maybe they're sitting there listening to this shit and they don't even know how to respond because it's so hypocritical and it's pretty much nonsense such as this exact next scene is about lala's boundaries versus ariana's boundaries and it even goes a step further into Katie's boundaries. And when Katie lays it out, dude, I felt the worst for her because I forgot about that shit last year when people are making jokes about Schwartz hooking up with Rachel right after they fucking got divorced and no one gave a shit yeah. about her. But you look at the boundaries with Lala and look, I made that video that went viral on Instagram about inviting Randall back next year to play pickleball. And obviously we don't want Randall back on the screen. And yes, we do understand that they're different situations. But the whole point, as Ariana said so succinctly, so well put, we are aware that they are different scenarios. Yes, yours is a little bit deeper. There's a lot more depth to it because of the children or the child that's involved, the custody battle, all of the allegations against Randall. Yes, valid point. The bottom line, I respected your boundaries during this time. I didn't have to know the reasons why because you're my friend. You said, hey. These are my boundaries. Please respect them as your friend. Not my job to question them. My job is to say, got you, girl. I'll back you up. Don't understand yep. this one, but hey, no big deal. The fact that Lala can't understand that part of it, and she keeps bringing it back to, well, it doesn't make sense to me that you can stay in the same house as him, but you have all these boundaries. Nobody can talk to him and can't be friends with him. But meanwhile, you're staying down the, down the hallway and you got a new boyfriend. It's like, it doesn't matter. She just said, it doesn't matter. I respect your yep. boundaries. You respect mine. These are the boundaries. And that's when we got into Katie's shit. Nobody respected her boundaries. They used it as material on podcasts, Sheena. Like, yep. it's just, it's, I guess it gets frustrating when you see actual moments and things get glossed over because one person wants to stand and stamp their feet and say it's unfair. It's like, well, at the same time, dude, you were doing the same shit, but- Ariana, Katie, and the rest of the crew respected your feelings. Yep. You weren't even able to do that after, lest we were, lest we remind, lest we forget, lest lest we remind, lest we remind and forget <laughs> that a year ago, Lala's content on her podcast, Sheena's content on her podcast, was all about how much we hate Sandoval, never being friends with him again. Nobody should be friends with him again. Fast forward, their tune has changed. Yeah, and it's not just that, but like how much did Lala actually share during the whole Randall of it all? She wanted she didn't want to film any of it. She didn't want to get involved. And I think she that claims really they weren't it, allowed to because of legal it's issues. Bullshit. Yeah, of course. That's what they all do. That's like the scapegoat of every Bravo show. We can't talk about that. It's an ongoing investigation. Like, is it an investigation? No, it's probably not. If Randall's Sheen is, is able Randall's is. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's, still, that's but, a different I'm thing. Not, it's not you a can pass, talk though. about yeah, and you can talk about your feelings about what's going on. You're not even going to do that. So no, I think that really what it comes down to is just Lala is jealous 
And this is how her jealousy is coming out. Everybody swooped in and tried to help out Ariana. Well, no, no one did that for me. Why is that fair? Now we don't have to like what she can't even talk to Sandoval. Like I had to go do other things. Did you? Like, I, it's just not the same situation. And it's just, again, the only person, the only people on this show is Katie and Ariana that actually think, okay, yeah, no, real people, when you're going through <laughs> situations, if you don't want to deal with this, you don't talk about it, but you respect your friend's wishes. This isn't a real friendship. Lala is just looking at her like, oh, how can I, how can I dig into what Ariana is up to so that I can further my chances of getting another season on VPR so that I can further my chances of having a good podcast. The people that are going, I guess today or whenever the fuck her episodes drop, because who cares? The people that are going to listen to it are trying to understand why she is the way that she is. And she's just going to keep going on and on and on with this persona that is Lala. And she's just going to keep going. Like, we're never actually going to understand her real feelings on the matter because she's just so deep in the fake bullshit that, w that she's not even a real person anymore. <laughs> Who are you? Who are and you? And that's a good point because we get the moment that you talked about earlier where she tries to throw it back at Ariana and be like, well... Did you have my back when Charlie was talking shit about, you know, me not or me doing the Randall thing wrong? And I'm saying that I'm not doing that well, but yeah, pretty no, much I implying that she went for the wrong rich guy, didn't get the car, didn't get the house, was left with nothing like she lost pretty much. And that's her big moment to throw at Ariana. And Ariana's like, well, time out. We did talk about this on camera. They didn't show it. So. We squashed that. Yes, I should have had your back. I didn't in that moment, and I feel bad about it. She apologized. Roll the tape. Thank God they had that queued up, ready to go. I, know. I was like, yeah. So here's your big argument, and this is the perfect cherry on top. This just shows you what she's trying to do. She's looking for anything to find a wrinkle in this, so that she can shake things up and get after Ariana, get after Katie. And it's like, dude, all of your evidence isn't real evidence you're just throwing her, shit against the wall hoping it sticks her exact response to it was well you know what they didn't show that they didn't put that on screen so we're gonna do this again for yeah. the people now like no lala no. like you should know how this works we're gonna see that right now every time that somebody references unseen footage or a scene that wasn't able to be aired for whatever reason or even a past scene from six or seven years ago Bravo always clips it in, no matter what it is, no matter what their agenda is, if their agenda is still bringing down our Ariana for whatever fucking reason, as it was at the end of the season, they're always going to put that in there so that we have context. You know how mm -hmm. this works. You've seen this go on and on and on. So why would you think that we're not going to see that? Now you look crazy. Now you look insane. Now you look like what you were in the last episode. Just trying to produce the show for the sake of producing the show. You can't say something. I know, like, we all know what you're trying to do, but the fact that you're going to explicitly say, we didn't get to see that on camera, so we're going to do this again, about an apology, about Ariana apologizing to you face-to-face, -face. you want to redo that? This isn't fucking TV. This isn't a movie. You're not going to go ahead and script all of this and say, oh, let's do that again because it wasn't good enough the first time. It happened already years ago. Like, get over it. We like a fourth wall break, but when you're constantly breaking the fourth wall, yeah, no. that's a problem because this yeah. is reality TV. We're aware that there's producers involved. We're mm -hmm. aware they drum shit up. We're aware they change the timeline intentionally to drum up drama. Yep. We know that. We don't need you doing it too because that just ruins the whole thing. That was the biggest issue with the last episode. We sat there and watched as fucking Jermaine gets involved and you're like, dude, fuck off. Like, We don't need yep. to see you. So it's just, it's aggravating, but what's going to cheer me up is we get to talk about dancing with the stars now. <laughs> yeah. The Which still makes no sense. She, look, there was something that came out that pretty much said it was somebody involved with dancing with the stars that said we weren't really going after Sheena because she doesn't have the quote unquote star power. You're not going, you might go on now as like satire because it's become a thing so maybe yeah. now they'll give her or extend an olive branch to see if she wants to go on but she doesn't have time this year because she's got plans with the band cue a katie eye roll and i guess my my issue with sheena in this is again and she leans into it too which also irritates me it always comes back to her it's always about her that's 
frustrating. She's upset yeah. that she didn't find out about Dancing with the Stars. She's upset about the Broadway thing because nobody found out about it except Ariana's like inner circle. She was at a show that she had to invite myself to. Or no, sorry, she invited herself she invited into herself Ariana's to the trailer. Room. Yeah, yeah, that's what she did. Yeah. And in that moment, they were talking about her day the next day because I guess she was making the announcement and they're like, oh, shit, should we tell her? Yeah, that's probably a little bit awkward. But also, I guess if you guys aren't that close to where after you threw it all away for Sandoval and now you and Sandoval aren't talking and now you're also not talking to Ariana. Why do you feel that you're privy to that info, I guess, is my biggest thing. And I will say to that point, they have both said like, oh, no, you're my girl, like your family, all of those things. Do you think that your behavior during the season warrants you to be let in on this stuff? Because I certainly don't. She probably does, honestly. And look, I mean, it's not, it's it's called Dancing with the Stars. It's not called Dancing with the reality TV actor that really wants to be a musical artist because that would be really too long. Like, we just can't put that out there. You're not you actually you you the fucking the reference of, oh, I've got a lot of plans with the band. Like, the band, shut the, up. The just, 27s. Just, I, I the seven the B seventy twos. I don't know. B seventy fifty twos. Who cares? We're never going to hear of them that again. Is a band. On fucking. Yeah, I know it is. It's a band from the fifties. But hey. I, I, we're never going to hear about that band again because if, unless it's on VPR, who the fuck cares? They're not something that's going to be groundbreaking, and they're probably worse off with Sheena than they were before. So who cares? But no, I think that her plan is if she talks about it the whole season and she freaks out about it and makes enough of a stink. We'll talk about it at the reunion and Andy will maybe put in a good word for me and maybe oh, I'll get a sympathy vote. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll get a sympathy vote so that I can be on dancing with the stars. And you know what the funniest part is? If you are on dancing with the stars, we all know that you just cried and complained your way onto that. And you're probably going to go home the first week. Like nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to vote for you because nobody gives a shit. There's a weird part of me that wants to see her on it. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, yeah. No, I want to see her on it. I'm, not, I'm not, probably not going to watch it. I didn't watch the Ariana Dancing with the Stars, but I saw clips. I would like to see clips of her doing it and then her crying happy tears afterwards because she got her dream, which, by the way, weird fucking dream. Mauricio was on there and he fucking cheated on his wife during it. So why did he want to be on there? <laughs> Like it's just it's just allegedly. an insane dream. Allegedly, I'm sorry. Yeah, allegedly, he 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 did hold hands, which is potentially cheating. So yeah, no, hey, it's just hey, dirty hand holder. Yeah, dirty, you dirty hand holder. You don't know where that hand's been. Oh God, we're going down a path now. Let's let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. This is when we get to Joe and Allie enter the scene, dude. Allie charges one ninety five an hour for astrology well, I mean, chart. How long does an astrology chart take? An hour. I, oh, dude, the way that she gets into it, I would imagine she could stretch that out for a few hours if she needed to. Yeah. Like, that's uh, it, it goes by birth date, time that you were born. Like, it's specific. I still want that. We, we need to pull some money together and do do one reading, either me or probably you. Have you ever seen you're definitely less into it than I am? Have you ever seen that meme where a guy's texting his mom and he says, Hey, mom, what time was I born? And the response is just get away from that girl. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 how I feel about it. I like Allie though. She's one No, of I like Allie. I, look, I, you know, if she wants to go capitalize on that, especially with all of the things that are going on for her personally, go for it. Go get your bag. Do what you got to do. Yeah. I I just don't think it's, you know, real. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I want to get mine done or maybe yours. Maybe we should do yours see if we can turn you into a believer. We'll reach out. We'll see what we can do. Don't worry, guys. I'm on this. I'm on this. This is like top of my priority list to. now. I'm going to. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my okay. real dad. But anyway, let's get to Joe real quick. I know we touched on in the beginning, but I need to just double back on this one because was Katie a little too mean? I thought, yeah, just because I don't like when you see active bullying happening i don't think it's necessary ever where it's a group of girls standing there talking shit and the girl can clearly see that they're doing it didn't love all that i do understand where katie was coming from the way that joe moved was very sketchy i think that she was within her right to react the way she did not fun to watch but those are two separate things entirely i think if you look back at that text that she sent to katie if that text hadn't been sent this is a different story but you yeah. sympathized and empathized with her and then moved into her ex-husband's place. 
and you, and like the, the, the semantics of it cracks me up. Like they're both so stuck on. Well, she didn't move in, didn't do this, didn't do that. It's like, look, you guys had a situation ship shortly after this girl had contacted your ex wife to apologize and say that she like sympathizes with her, and then went to bang your man. So yes, that's slimy, that's sketchy behavior. Katie called her out on it, and this is where I feel bad for Joe again, though, because. Schwartz, God, you're feeling bad for Joe so much. It's hard not to, dude. And even Katie Why? felt bad for her in this. Katie yeah, well, felt bad because of the Schwartz because of Because you're all. sitting, that's what I'm talking about. This is the Schwartz part where it's like, okay, yeah. he frames this thing all season as we're just really good friends. We have a connection, but it's not love. It's not emotional. Or I guess it is emotional, but everything he describes is a very serious relationship. Yeah. But he says, but we're just friends and she gets it. You guys wouldn't understand. Meanwhile, as he's saying that she is saying, yeah, we dated. It was pretty much a relationship. Yeah. It was pretty fucking special. Yeah. I really care. about. Like she was led on more than any human being I've ever seen. We yeah. watched it all season. I felt bad for her during the season. In this moment, everyone in the cast is like, Schwartz, do you not see what you're doing? You're being a fuck boy right now. He's like, no, I'm not. No, yeah. uh, Stop saying stuff like that. It's like, no, dude, you you are saying that you had all of the pieces of a very real, serious relationship. You told her you loved her after yeah. you slept with her, but it's not that deep. It's not that but deep. It's not that you deep. wouldn't get it. You guys wouldn't no. understand. I I personally loved that we get to go through all of this and Schwartz describes every intimate detail about what was going on. And you could see Joe get really happy when he's talking and then get really sad when he's talking. And then they immediately just bring up Schwartz's new girlfriend. <laughs> I know dude. Just <laughs> fucking Florida. And Joe's Joe's first comment was just like, well, or I think even before the girlfriend was brought up, Joe brings her up and she goes, well, you're in a relationship now and you're showing her off to everybody and you couldn't be happier and you're doing this and that. And it's like, Okay, yeah, like you you should realize that he wasn't showing you off because he didn't want to show you off, whatever, I don't care. And then we go into So Schwartz, how is your relationship? Is she know, great? Bro. And he and he is beaming while talking about this girl, just talking about her in the nicest possible way, and we get the fucking edited pictures of showing them together and I what know, she dude. looks like and he's just he couldn't be happier talking about his current girlfriend. That was pulling teeth talking about Joe. And going through all of that. And she's still sitting right next to him while we get to talk about his new relationship and how happy he is. And that's when she starts crying. And it's like, all right. Like, yeah, not like you said, not fun to watch. No. But like, no. you know, fuck Joe. I don't care. No, she's not don't. cool. Don't get me wrong. No. Like her lives yeah. have shown her true colors. Don't get me wrong. I've seen that, yeah. that side of her. But – Dude, that sucked. That really sucked. And the fact that Sandoval wants to jump into Schwartz's defense, thank God Lala had a good moment. And she's like, why is everyone trying to make this girl feel nuts right now? Like, yeah. hey, men in the room, let's maybe not tell Joe what all this laughing was or was not. I know, dude. It's so sad. Like, that's my point. The fact that well, Sandoval goes, you guys don't know. You didn't see behind the scenes. It's like, we're watching live, dickhead. We're watching her reactions and what they're both even... saying. I don't even know what Sandoval was trying to defend. Was he trying to defend Schwartz or Joe? Yeah, just, he was well, saying it was poor. Well, he was trying on. to defend their relationship, that it wasn't an actual relationship. And he was saying it was portrayed differently on TV than what was actually happening. It's like, no, dude, because Joe is telling us right now, like they're both saying opposite things yeah. at the same time. They're literally both speaking at the same time, saying two different things entirely. One points to a very real relationship. The other one points to a fuck boy that was trying to keep her at arm's length because he wasn't ready to dive in. Like, yeah. And Sandoval, of all people, hey, bud, you don't get to comment on relationships ever. <laughs> you don't get to ever speak uh, on incredible. anybody's relationship because you don't know how to have one. You're yeah. the biggest steaming pile of shit, and you continue to prove that time in and time out. So shush, in this moment, shush, for the rest of the reunion, shush, Make you, <laughs> we don't need your two cents. But Joe lost me again at the very end of it because she says, you know, I'll date Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I was like, that, that makes sense. That, that makes that a lot makes of sense. total yeah. sense. Uh -huh. And for those of you that aren't on the, the up and up or in the know about Aaron Rodgers and his wacky shit, do yourself a favor, dive down that rabbit hole and yeah. then – Look at those two together. That would be reality TV gold. <laughs> that would be 
awesome. I would watch yeah, that. That would be one, incredible. For one season. One yeah. season. After that, it would be way too real. I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't like it after that. But we move on to James and Allie and their house. And I'm so glad they commented on the airplanes and gave us an airplane montage. The only way they could make me feel better about showing an airplane before every scene that they were in was the fact that they also noticed it. And James yeah. is like... Yeah, I would look at the TV. I'm like, oh, is there an airplane? Because then I know that's all seen. I'm like, oh, you guys picked up on it too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so that that made the payoff for the airplane thing was totally worth the wait. It's perfect. So, yeah, well done, Bravo, on that one. Didn't see it coming. Really didn't. No, so, I, I didn't. At, in that moment, I'm like, are they listening to our podcast? What's going on here? No. How do they know that? No, they're not. <laughs> because everyone's talking about it. Yeah, Shoot. that's fair. Don't, don't do that. Uh, it's just us. Just us. But we talk about Hippie and the behavior that he was exhibiting. I actually liked LVP's chime in here. I have not liked anything else she's done this entire reunion. She, she doesn't need to be there. She really doesn't like her. Oh. She's clearly on the dude's side, no matter what's going on. She's taking the guy's sides and not even in a logical way. Again, this, this reunion is devoid of a lot of just logic where it's like, yep. Oh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense why you're saying X, Y, or Z. So that's a little frustrating. And her chime ins have been on par with that. They just are not necessary and they don't make a whole lot of sense. And it just shows you where her priority is with this show. If you watch her, if you haven't watched Vanderpump Villa yet, watch her on Vanderpump Villa, how invested and in tune she is with that show. And then watch her during this season on VPR. And it'll just show you the headspace she's in with the show. She's yeah. a producer by name, her, she started the show. She wants it to continue so that she can make money off of it. She's not invested in this show anymore. I don't get that from her at all. But I did appreciate this one chime in only because I agreed with it. And when I thought about it, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. When Hippie or Graham is reintroduced to James, when LVP surprises him, the dog's reaction to James, I do believe speaks volumes because if he was the one that was the cause of this bad behavior, which he says was because of the plane ride over from wherever I, I was he from Indiana, he Indiana, Indiana. Yeah. and they stuck him under a plane. They're blaming that for it, which I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's maybe. Like puppy trauma. I don't know. Yeah. But, That's why you don't get dogs from breeders. Yeah. Adopt. Don't shop. There you go. Or get blackout drunk when you're an alcoholic and order a dog online and he'll show up at your apartment six hours later and you forget that you bought the dog and now you have Louie. Who saved my life? So it saved was, your life. That's a true. That's a way to do it. Story. I blacked out. Well, you know, we know you've told this one before. Have I? Yeah. Well, I <laughs> seem to remind our listeners this is why alcohol is bad. I, I don't know actually because I got Louie out of it. Yeah. This is a road I don't need to go down. Nope. Let's let's get let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> it's not worth it. Let's just move on. But they do bring up the whole. Allie going to the wedding and James ended up going, thank God. And we got a lot of backlash for saying that he should just go to the fucking wedding, which I stand by that. Like he should. And for yeah. the reasons that Allie said, like she sacrificed a lot. She wants a compromise from him as well. That's a very easy compromise to make. Yeah. And there's a lot of very equipped people to watch your dog for the weekend. That was our whole stance. We're not saying stick the dog in a kennel for four days. We're saying find <laughs> an appropriate fucking dog sitter that can like take care of your dog for four days and go to the wedding and support your girlfriend who you want to have kids with and marry. Yeah. That's a no brainer for me. So people that took umbrage with that, I, I don't care. Like I stand firm on that one. Yeah. And this is where we get the, just the best line of the season from Allie who again, she's great. She's great for this show. She's great for TV. If this show does go away or put on pause, I hope that there's a show that she can jump into I would like more out of Allie. Yeah. I don't know if I see where she would fit because she can't go to the Valley because the Valley's no. like, you know, forties and families and stuff like that. But I don't know. that would be interesting to see if she would pop back up elsewhere. If this show does go down. Uh, but the more I'm watching this reunion and the more people are talking on mine, I don't think this show's over. I really don't. Uh, I think we might miss some people from the show. Like Ariana may move on, but I'm pretty sure it's coming back at some okay. point. There may be a long pause, but just buckle up, dude. I don't think we're done yet. But uh, <laughs> she says that she's in the same place she was before about having kids and getting married. And that's where we get the line. Not the most inspiring group. No offense, guys. And everyone's up in arms. 
Like they laugh it off eventually, but everyone's like, whoa, it's like, guys, come well, on. Well, I love that I love that both Sheena and Lala both take it to the mother aspect. And it's like, yeah, no, clear. she was talking about like getting married. She wasn't talking clear. about she's not gonna take shots at being a mother. Don't do that. That yeah, I thought the same exact thing. The minute no. they both got up in arms, I'm like, dude, they're not talking about your babies. Okay. Nobody is. You guys are great moms from what we've seen. No one is shitting on your parenting at all that's actually one of the few things that we applaud you for yeah is the fact that you both seem like very good mothers so no yeah. clearly Allie's not talking about the moms she's talking about the marriage because all of you are disasters and she backpedals a little bit and says well not you sheena and brock it's like what <laughs> what do you mean do you want to get yelled at by your husband? Do you, like, yeah. Do you what? have you watched any of this sh- season? Have you watched any of their interactions? It's awful. What are you talking about like that's not a good example. No. But I got to shout it out, and I always will. And I'm glad Andy does it too. And we may not like her around here, but five and a half years sober is an incredible thing. So shout out to Lala. Shout out to James. Almost a year without alcohol, so that's also incredible. And. I didn't love the route it went after that where, you know, I do believe from what I've seen and heard from James that he did this for himself. Now, that could be intertwined with other reasons. Like when I got sober, obviously it was for me, but it was also for Poppy. It was for my family. It was for a lot of people. So, yes, Ali might have been the push that he needed to get sober, but. The fact that he's still doing it and the fact that he claims it was for the right reasons. I don't like that Andy threw it in there like, well, it sounds like you did it for Allie. It's like, hmm, are you trying to throw like a a shot at his sobriety right now? Like that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I know it's like a non-issue. It just, I get stuck on shit like that. Yeah. But it's just, it's nice to, to see that he is in a place in his life, DJ James Kennedy, where he's aware of that. He's proud of it. And his partner is also, I love that Allie's like, you know, if he drinks again, I'm out. I'm like, good, good for you. Like you have boundaries. Yeah. It's great. So maturity, perhaps, but p- I don't perhaps. know. Perhaps. Perchance. perhaps. Big question mark. Boop. Big. We'll see. But we move on to Anne and arguably the star of the season, but don't say that because Sheena will get pissed that you're not talking about summer moon. Yeah. Why? What? 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 Why? 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 No, she's not that. She was great when she was on screen, I guess. She's a baby. What are we talking sure. about? Don't do that. That doesn't have to all be about you, Sheena. Like, you're going to make me hate your kid, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to. We already went down the rabbit hole of making fun of her Instagram. I don't want to go any further. Yeah, no, no. We like Summer Moon. So yeah. stop, stop. Like, that's not a funny moment. Uh, I was just like, a, oh, God, another one? But... The whole thing with Anne, like the more I look at it, like during the season, like, yeah, it was a great like side storyline or whatever. But the fact that Sandoval got like felt betrayed, like you, she's your secretary. She's your assistant or whatever her title was. Like, I, is it that deep? Because she wanted to go work for Ariana. Like, why would she want to work for you? She has to pick up your gross parties every morning. Yeah. Like, she's not doing actual work. Which, by she's the way, that was that was in the job description. Cleaning up after That's gross so parties. Funny. <laughs> like, what, dude? And he's like, well, let me Medi- clarify. Mediating so between me and my, my ex. Beliefs. Yeah. Why would she want that job? And why would you get upset God. that she's going on? I know it's for Ariana and everything well, seems like a dig at you at this point, but like, yeah. of course she wants to work for her. Why would she want to work for you? The only person that wants to work for you is your boy, Jason, who wants to bang you. And he's your drummer. So, like, that's why he wants to work for you. So, like, don't, don't. I just didn't just, get it. Yeah, just just don't do that and allow her to move on. Like you could win so many more points if you're like, yeah, you know what? I get it. She wants to like Ariana composed on the other hand could have taken a shot at Tom and she's not taking shots at Tom. She's just ignoring him and leaving him alone. But she's sitting here and saying, yeah, and wanted to work for a woman. She wanted to just like do things with like a bunch of women and like it got her into something about her and doing stuff here and there. Like that's what she wants to do. She doesn't want to work for you anymore. And for him to say, well, she could have just been like, uh, you know, I, I don't really want to do this. And I, I'd give her my best and tell her to be on her way. Would you still do that if she had told you beforehand and then a week later was working for Ariana? No, no. you wouldn't have. So don't act like you would have been cool with it. You're pissed about it. But I'm going to tread lightly on this next topic because this is what got us fucking skewered on Twitter. So 
going to phrase it very intentionally here. Yeah, I'm but it doesn't matter. Just just phrase it however you want because we also got skewered for kissing Ariana's bum apparently. So uh, we had said we need to we put chat win. on. Although that was one of the funnier reviews I think I've ever read. Yeah. Did you read the whole thing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you see what the bottom part was? Yeah. So the first part was stop listening after 20 minutes because these guys need to reapply chapstick after like kissing Ariana's ass, blah, blah, blah. The bottom. And, oh, and we got and we're, I'm unfollowing because of it. The bottom paragraph was, but super cool what your brother's doing. I'm going to support that and follow him. Yeah. Great work, guys. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, great. Yeah. Like go support Stone, even if you hate us. But I thought that was hysterical. I was like, oh, that. At That's least incredible. you're charitable. Yeah. <laughs> you hate us, but you're supporting a charity. <laughs> That's fine. I'll take that. That's I can support that. Us. But in this moment, I did understand where Aria, again, don't think she should have left the chicken skewers out. Don't skewer me for that one. But the simple statement of, I should have been consulted first before this was going down. I was like, ah, that's fair. Somebody should have at least called you and said, hey, we got to go into your room because the AC is acting up. Yes, that's valid, especially given the bizarre living scenario they're in. Correct. That's yeah. just a simple solution to where she probably would have been like, hey, make sure that Maya doesn't eat the chicken skewers on the side of the bed because I didn't throw them away after eating them last night. Yeah. Again, don't leave chicken skewers out for sure, but at all. least but at least we got a little bit more. Now, look, I mean, rightfully so, she was very pissed off about the whole situation. So we didn't get a lot of details as to what she actually wanted to happen. And right. now that she's actually laying it out, it's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. You're, you have a very makes bizarre no living situation. You literally, both of you have to go through Anne or whoever is in that house to say, hey, Tom's gonna come down. Like, why wouldn't somebody reach out? And of course, yeah. Tom's gonna say, you know, we've got, we've got all these electrical issues and we've got air conditioning issues. And I don't really think about it. I just, you know, I just have to go in there and I have to fix it. I'm sorry, Tom, but but you don't look like a fixer to me. You don't look He's like someone handy. who's doing that. You're calling someone to come over and do it, which means you have even more time in your hands to make sure that Ariana's cool with that. Hey, by the way, just a heads up, this guy's coming over to fix the air conditioning. He's got to get into your room. You had more than enough time to do that. It's not like there was something exploding in her room that you needed to run into. So don't paint this picture like you were sprinting in there to go save the day and fix the electrical current in your house because you're the only one who does anything and you're the only one who buys batteries. Like that's not what you were doing. You were going in there to, you, you just didn't give a shit. Like that's all it was. And honestly, I would take it a step further. I bet he was snooping around in there. He probably was because yeah. he's weird. And he tried to pin it on Ann. He's like, I, I don't even know if it was me or Ann that was in there. I was like, oh, you dick. Like, don't, <laughs> but don't you still didn't us. answer the fact of you locked the dog in there. Like you shut yeah. the door and let the dog stay in there. So you're talking about leaving the door open for the dog to go in. But who shut the door? I don't yeah, know. And, th and then he wants to play the, the card of he's upset that she's keeping the dog and rolling his eyes. Like, you don't want he the dog. He doesn't give a dog. fucking shit you don't about, care that dog. about the dog. Dude. No. Do you think that he went in there with his leg knife to try to fix the AC and like just poked yeah. it a few times? It was like, oh, this ain't working. <laughs> this ain't working. Yeah, all this that special, all that special forces training that I went to, it's not working. They didn't teach me one goddamn thing about electrical. <laughs> Thank God I've got this picture of Raquel to get me through. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the moment when Sandoval's rolling his eyes about the Maya stuff and James jumps in and I loved, this was one of James better reads. And I think yeah. because he didn't get full volume, it was just like smooth. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude, get him!" Because he's like, you can roll your eyes, but you had no problem being Graham's daddy. You got your dick wet for seven months. Daddy, daddy boy. I was like, fucking, yeah. like, that was so good. Yeah, like, get, him. Oh, yeah. get after him. It was. And he even says, like, I wouldn't have said shit if you didn't roll your fucking eyes. And now Sandoval wants to play the card. Well, I've heard things, James. He's like, oh, you haven't heard shit. He's like, Get off your high horse, James. And he says, I'm galloping. So he, he got so upset, James did, that he dropped two bruvs, which is one of the greatest words in the yeah. world. Bruv is great. And I wish that we could use it in the States without looking we like total losers. Because uh. when you drop, look, bruv, like, that's fucking hard. And he goes, I'm galloping so far ahead of you, bruv. You're sitting back there in a fucking swamp, bruv. I'm like, oh, 
yeah <laughs> that was such a great moment and honestly we needed that all fucking season dude and I that know. was my biggest issue with the men on the show this year what the fuck guys like there's so many moments where you could have stepped up and said yo sandoval shut the fuck up dude like get your shit together and we saw james like dip a toe in the water and then the next scene's him like sandoval apologizing their buddy buddy again we saw this up and down same shit with brock we saw moments where he chimed in back down it's like guys really bad look for the dudes we need you to like show that we don't put up with shit like this in a friend group and you guys yep. are failing miserably so finally and it came about because of the dog whatever the reason was thank god like i, I know. needed this moment so fucking bad and he delivered tenfold and i i i do love that he did it now and i agree with you we we needed this energy all season and james was a big part of that like james going back and forth from yelling at him at his party his stupid birthday party but you were there in the first place because you wanted to give him a chance to see if he would apologize and then he didn't so then you got mad and yelled at him and then you talked mm -hmm. to him in lake tahoe and you're able to sit down and you accept his apology and then the rest of the season you didn't go after him like there oh, were a lot of different things band yeah band practice he did so like I, but then I he really apologized that night at his set at uh sir yeah so like maybe look this this could just be a softer james this could be the james that we get when he's not drinking which is helpful too but he's definitely still conflicted in his feelings where he wants to forgive Tom in his heart yeah. of hearts. He really wants to forgive Tom and he wants to be friends with Tom for whatever reason. I have no idea. But anytime that Tom does this, like he's still very sensitive to anything that Tom's going to do. And I, it just takes you back to he feels super betrayed because of the Raquel thing. And he's yeah. not going to get over that. And look, yeah, that doesn't mean that he's not over Raquel. I think he's fully over Raquel and he's happy with Allie, but he's not over Tom betraying him with Raquel. That's a big no. problem. So anytime that any reminder pops up about it, he's going to go after him. Yeah, but at least he did this time. And hopefully this is not like a, a moment where they're going to reconvene and be cool again because they simply don't need to. Yep. But uh. Phew, I don't know, dude. It's going to be interesting to watch that shake out. But again, this episode, solid. Two solid, solid episodes. I didn't think they had it in them. And with the reveal of the last scene of the finale, like next episode's going to hit. At least part I, of yeah, it's going to hit. At least part of it. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do for the rest of the episode, but at least that last part's going to hit hard. Do you know how necessary it was for this show to have a solid reunion after the season they put up? I mean, if it was an absolute stinker of a reunion, we could get it canceled. So <laughs> for the show, yes, it was very necessary for us. Maybe not. But let's get into some questions and look who's got the questions tonight. Back on top, baby. I told question you the master. Interim. The question master, me, not the interim question master, Magoots. Let's start out. Uh, it's been a long time since I read names, though, so this could be a oh, fucking nightmare. Oh, boy. Now we'll be all right. From Tishal Manza. Since when is the show about conversations? Produced convos aren't why I watch. Thank you. We yeah. don't either. And we don't have to say that much on that. We talked about it already. But yeah, like that's where the show continues to break the fourth wall too much. Too much breaking of the fourth wall leads to yeah. a bad reality. Reality show. Moving on from there. Ooh, I like this one. From Holly, damn it, I did it already. From Holy Bex, Batman, crossover question. Who will break up first? They said sadly. Who will sadly break up first in parentheses? James and Allie or Paige and Craig? Uh, I think James and Allie. You do? Yeah. I'm holding out hope for Paige and Craig. I think they're great for each other. I think that they, I still have some questions about James and Allie. I don't really, the only question I have about Paige and Craig is, when are they going to do it? That's fair. That's fair. Let's see what else we got. From Mary Had a Little, congratulations on baby Russell. Thank you so much. So sweet. We had a, a bunch of people reach out to congratulate us both. You on the hard launch. <laughs> Me on the baby. <laughs> it was a hell of an episode. From Travis Bowden, did you see how scared Lala was when they said they hadn't seen the last few minutes? Yeah, yep. I did. Yeah, yep. and I don't know if that was a produced moment where they just found like a reaction shot of her, but yeah, I don't think she knows what's coming. Like, I don't know what's I, coming. 
I don't think she knows what's coming, and I sure as hell hope that Tom doesn't know what's coming, because oh, I can see him right. sitting over there like, oh, I wonder, I wonder what it is that they're talking about. Like, yeah, he probably thinks that it's the Lala of it all because that was a big blow up moment that happened, and he overheard it and clearly had a reaction to it. I could see him in his mind being like, well, "What did I say after that? I don't really remember. I think it's okay. I think I'm good." Like, oh no, very not good. Very nope. not good. Let's yep. do a few more from, well, I like this, from, it's either M. Renteria or Mr. Enteria. I like the second one. I don't think that's it. But Mr. Enteria 627, do you think that LVP hates Ariana? <clears throat> no. Um, but, I mean, if the theory is that Ariana is not coming back and they all know it, or at least the producers in Bravo know it, she's probably a little upset with her and probably spent some time trying to convince her to come back because if Ariana has gone, the show looks completely different and you don't have her like she carried it this year with a lot of the storylines with what was surrounding her. So without her, we don't really know what it looks like. I don't think she hates her though. I think she respects her and wants the best for her, but I think hates a strong word for that. I don't think she hates her, but I think that anybody in a production role on these shows gets but hurt when a member of the cast gets bigger than the show. I yeah. think that the people at the helm think that they are the end all be all. And when somebody transcends Bravo into Broadway commercials, love like everything that Ariana has been presented with yeah. after Scandaval, I think that, yeah, I think they take it very poorly in the like executive producers room. That's what I believe. So yeah, I don't think she hates her maybe resents a little bit. I think that would be more fitting. But yeah, let's do two more. Oh, this is a good one from Marissa and Palma. Thoughts on Lala using the kid card every time she wants to deflect or take the heat off of her? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think she does that. Um, I don't think she was doing it too much in this episode, though. Last episode, she did. Last episode, yeah. Episode. Um, episode. Yeah, I, I mean, that that seems to be her M.O. Um, and she always takes like, yeah, she does. Yeah, because anytime that somebody goes after her character, she's like, what do you call me, a bad mother? It's like, no. Or she says, like, I'm providing for my kid. And this, yeah. What I think is, I think that, yeah, it's a deflection tactic. And I think that it's interesting that you think your problems are more serious because you have a child involved. Yes, I will say there are certain situations that are definitely more drastic because you have a child, the Randall shit, 100%. That's messy because of the custody battle. It's all these other crazy things that I totally agree with. There's a lot of moments yeah. where yes, Lala, you're correct. It gets exacerbated because you have a child involved. Agreed. There are a lot of moments, however, that do not call for that, that you're almost belittling other people's experiences because they don't have kids. Yeah. And people can still go through some serious shit without children involved. So that's where I'm like, all right, dude, like this is not the moment for it. That's kind of my my take. I on think, it. yeah, I, I think she's trying to drum up some support from the audience being like, oh, the mothers will understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, maybe, maybe. The last one is a great one from Liv Tate. Fuck, Mary kill. Bryce Harper, Joy and Mylotta, and Tyrese Maxey. That's oh, a man. tough one because I don't want to kill any of those guys and I want to fuck no. all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, shit. By the way, this I hope like... that for some reason this is what gets back to them. And my first interaction with three of my borderline heroes is me saying I want yeah. to fuck them. So, uh, man. My lot has got that beautiful singing voice. Are we like, is this factoring in what they mean to the city or is it just them as humans? It's what it, all encompassing, dude, that you're marrying Jeff, one of them. It's, too it's, tough. it's your whole life. See, like, I think that I would, oh, fuck. I know. I know. I this is I the hardest kill... one I've ever gotten. Oh, man. I don't want to kill any of them. Um, I will. Shit. I'm going to marry Harper. Uh I'm going to boink Maxi only because I'd feel really bad killing him right before his prime. Like he's about to go into his prime right now. Yeah. He's, and, he's I, and I guess I like kill Maylotta. 32 a game. Yeah. Like he's just doing You're killing Jordan. He's the sweetest man in the world. I know. You're I wanted to marry him monster. because of his voice. I wanted to marry him because of his voice, but, but then I'd have to kill Harper and I don't want to do that. 
Harper's done so much already. Uh, no, I'm going to switch it up, actually. Yeah. I'm going to marry Melata. I'm going to fuck Maxie, and I'm going to kill Harper. Wow. Okay. Mine is I'm going to marry Jordan because of his singing voice. And yeah. I don't Same. know if he has dual citizenship, but we're definitely going to travel. I imagine so love he does. that. Yeah, yeah, we can go out to Australia, go out there, hang out. Love that. Um, I'm going to boink Bryce, and I'm killing Maxie only because I have a longer relationship with Jordan and Bryce than I do with Tyrese. That's it. That's the only that's justification true. is that he's newer to the city. So I can't kill Jordan or Bryce. Yeah. That doesn't feel right in my heart. You know, you know how like sometimes there's like a, you know, there's no wrong answer. There's no right answer to this. Like no, there's just there's no, you, you, everything you do is wrong. So I hate yeah. you. Whoever asked you, that question. If actually. you want to pull at our heartstrings, just do this. Don't, don't pit our athletes up against each other because we love yeah. them all. <laughs> Yeah, who last asked that year. question? Do it last year and add Kimbrel in there, and we'll kill him every time. Yeah, who was it? Live, live Tate. Fuck you, Live Tate. Why would you do that to us? <laughs> Why? I'm gonna go to sleep. I have nightmares that they're gonna hear this, and then they're gonna be like, I "Wow, you killed me." It's like, no, Tyrese, I, I wouldn't actually. I love you. <laughs> oh man, but hey, we got through it. Uh, that is a remote episode. It is 11:47 for shoots. So thanks for. Uh, Thanks for keeping up, keeping up late. Good God. Keep, thanks for keeping up. Thanks for late. keeping up. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good note to end it on. We yeah. don't have to say anything else, but, nope. uh, Rob Rose out of here. Later.